educator. Yeah, Show up the next day, you're gold. I mean, that the old adage was don't let anyone that's paying money spar in the gym because we might lose a client. Like, do <laughs> not let the paying customers spar. If they spar, have them spar with someone that is okay getting hit. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> that was the thing. So <laughs> what did what prompted you to turn pro? A few years ago, somebody approached me about um, turning pro and, and being groomed as an opponent for Clarissa Shields. And part of that plan was seeing me as, uh, you know, coming up in the 168 pound category. So super middle, I guess that would be, or. Yeah, it gets ambiguous. We'll just call it middle. <laughs> whatever, we'll call whatever. it middle. We'll call it 160 middle weight ish, you know. <laughs> well, 168 actually. Oh, then super middle weight. So 168, but yeah, you're telling a great story. I'm just interrupted. So let me just sit back and listen. No, okay. Um, and, and anyways, but having me, you know, go up through the ranks at 168 and then eventually the, the point would be to fight Carissa and she'd be fighting someone 168 and she'd be coming up and wait to fight me at 168. And I'm like, you know what? It kind of put the bug in my mind because I hadn't been thinking about pro boxing. Um, although, you know, I think pro boxing always looked more fun. I think that I have a style that suits pro boxing a lot more, but it was never something that seemed exciting to me until recently. Um, but that kind of put the bug in my ear. But when I looked at that plan, it was like, it doesn't really make any sense. I, I was a welterweight fighter that came up to middleweight strictly for the Olympics. And, you know, in 2012, we only had the three weight categories. So why would I be going up? I'm already fighting too big at 165. Why would I be going up to 168 and look like the bigger fighter fighting the smaller fighter? Um, so I just decided after I took a few years away from boxing and then I came back and, and got 13 more amateur fights under my belt and some ring rust off. Um, I felt like, you know, I'll turn pro and I'll do it in a way that actually makes sense for me, you know, going as a welterweight um, and then going up to take fights. Sure. But not, you know, pretending to be some super middleweight and then fighting smaller people, or smaller people, whatever. Well, I think that what's interesting for you is this is an era where there's a lot of names out there in your division. Like we're going to have O'Shea Jones at some point turn pro. I assume we're going to have, we have Clarissa Shields. We have Christina Hammer. We've got, um, savannah marshall we got like a slew of names that i feel like fans are actually very excited to see them in with their equal yeah. and you're in that category all you gotta do is get your weight up and i'm not talking about it uh literally i'm talking about it figuratively in terms of your record once you get to that eight no point i think that you're in the running to get any of these fights and they should a network should get behind it and they should pay you a lot of money so you could put down on a house or something but that's just my anecdote, but is that kind of what you're seeing? Uh, I'm definitely seeing like going up and, and yeah, taking those, those fights. I think it's, um, it's great that it seems like women can move faster in the divisions. I mean, I had one fight, I'm ranked 14 already. So it's just really big indicator that things move quicker on the women's side. Um, and yeah, like you said, eight fights and then be able to get the, the bigger fights, I think is, is reasonable. And the folks that I've spoken to think that's reasonable. So it's definitely, um, definitely the plan. World's greatest matchmaker, matchmaker, Lukey. People love matchmaker, Lukey. I like you versus Summerlin for some form of an eliminator okay. fight. That's a, that's a matchmaker, Lukey yeah. special. Put that on a card. That's going to be a guaranteed hit. Let's do that. Cause you know what? Um, I just actually thought about that over the weekend. Like that'd be great. Uh, a good, a good one. I don't really know much about Summerlin. She's from Chicago though, right? She trained. So let me, let me sell the fight. Let me be a promoter right now. So she trains okay. with Jessica, Jessica McCaskill. I believe she's managed and uh, trained by Rick Ramos. She's being mm -hmm. kind of brought up on the regional circuit. I believe she's not an extensive amateur. I've heard that she, she hits very hard. She's got a good team around her. She's had a lot of professional sparring experience with McCaskill, who's a world champion and beaten very good fighters. At the same time, you're Mary Spencer. You're a decorated amateur. You're a southpaw. You bring a lot to the table. 
women's boxing isn't like men's boxing. A loss doesn't mean as much. We can get these good fights a lot quicker. Why don't we just make it, put you guys on TV, display these talents, and the winner to the winner, they get a bigger fight. I still it. Okay, there we go. I made the fight. I made the fight. Okay, I sold the fight. Um, I, I guess one last question. It's kind of like a, a, a shit question to end on, but it's something. Oh, no. uh, yeah, I know. I got to end on the shit question. I got. What's up, everybody? It's your good friend, Lukey, and I appreciate you watching this video. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment with suggestions, which is the reason you're seeing this video. And also, if this is just a single video and you're saying, where's the full interview? Look at the upper left-hand corner and you can find the full interview or check in our video section. We're rapidly trying to improve this channel and it takes support from not just myself, but also people that enjoy the channel to keep me motivated and try to give you the best boxing content. Be sure to go to itrboxing.com for all of your boxing needs. This is Luke.